friends, I got another haul from, guess where? If you know this pattern, you know it's Baker Creek. So what happened was they had an advertisement for flowers for Valentine's and um, they had so many different varieties that were um, for sale. So let's check them out. So first off it was packaged by Andrew Miano so that was cool thank you so the seed haul is primarily flowers but I did try to pick out some things that were flowery and good for pollinators as well as good for teas um, this isn't one of them of course but this is the Coreopsis yellow fully double and look at that I love how many petals how fluffy it looks it looks so gorgeous um, let's see Perennial zones 4 to 9, dwarf double petal tick seed type is a dazzling pollinator magnet, an early blooming native wildflower. The plants reach 12 to 14 inches tall and are suited to everything from meadows and wildflower stands to tidy beds, borders, and container gardens. So I love it. This is perennial and I will, I love that even more that it comes back year after year. Next I got the dandelion pink and you can um, make a tea out of this and um, it is not as prolific as the white dandelion so it won't spread too crazily um, it's perennial also that's awesome I didn't even know that wildflower from Central Asia a much less prolific member of the dandelion family the pastel blooms can be found growing along the forest edge lines meadows and roadsides in its native range blooms are alluring to butterflies honeybees and other pollinators and I heard when you make a tea out of it it's good for your kidney or your liver or something like that so anything that helps you know better your health you know it doesn't hurt because um uh, the sawtooth herb is, I believe, in the same family as the dandelion that people put into pot. So this is stock, beautiful salmon pink. Look at how pretty that is. All the flowers all along the, the top of it. And I've heard that stock smells real good, so I don't know if this, this will have the smell, um, the scents. Uh, so we'll find out when I grow it. Early flowering type, the single stem Japanese variety features fragrant, bold blooms of salmon pink on sturdy stalks, making it top notch for arrangements. This cousin of the cabbage has edible blooms and they add a dazzling dash of color to salads, fresh spring rolls, and other recipes. The fragrance and flavor are reminiscent of clove. <gasps> that is so awesome! I didn't even know it was edible. All I wanted was the beautiful flowers and the scent, and now that I know it's edible, that's even more wonderful. So out of these three so far, the there's two that are usable and for for consumption. Next I got the Aster Benary's Princess Bright Red Pink. Bright red, sorry. It looks pink to me, but it's really, really pretty. I'm sure it's red at the edges. And Aster Gala Gala Lavender. <clears throat> so let's see. 115 days to bloom a blazing crimson fully double petal variety three to four inch blooms in a mix of yellow eye and solid red centers vibrant blooms sit atop 28 inch tall stems love it so much it's so pretty so the gala gala lavender fluffy Fully double pincushion blooms in a lovely light lavender color. Blooms reach three to four inches across and stand atop sturdy 30 inch tall stems. Excellent for cut flower gardens, beds, and borders. Yeah, that looks really pretty. Next, I got the Daisy Pink Shades Paper. Look at how gorgeous that is. It has the pink um, outer border, the white and then the yellow center. It looks so gorgeous. I just could not help it. And I was trying not to buy too many flower seeds before. I was focusing on vegetables and herbs, but I really, really like um, these flowers and I, I've been eyeballing them over and over and I finally made the leap to get flowers. 
So Pink Shades Paper Daisy, a darling rosy hued everlasting bloom. These pa papery petal flowers sit atop 16 to 24 inch stems, making them suitable for the cutting garden as well as landscaping. A native of Australia, the plants are quite rugged and tolerant of poor soil, heat, and drought. That's awesome because in SoCal, we have all those. Next, I got this Cherry Brandy Rudbeckia. It looks so pretty, that color. It's like burgundy-ish red. Love it so much. Um, I believe it's, okay, I thought it was perennial, but it doesn't say. But a completely unique annual type Rudbeckia with cherry rose-colored petals. Large three to four inch blooms make the perfect landing pad for pollinators. Tiny, tiny, tidy plants reach 12 to 24 inches tall so if not I think it reseeds pretty well if it's not perennial next I got this poppy supreme look at how big it is in the hands of that individual and it's I mean it could be children's hands I'm not sure but it's so pretty with tropical high summer tones in semi to fully double petals this fluorescent winter Oh, Fluoro Select winner. Truly reigns supreme. Citrusy hues from grapefruit to tangerine always draw attention in beds and borders, especially from butterflies and bees. Love it so much. Next, I got some marigolds. This is Linnaeus Burning Embers. I love how bright it is. It's red. I didn't used to get red flowers very much and I saw it somewhere just bright in the middle of um, a yard and it just looks so pretty. It brings your attention to it. It draws your attention for reals. So this is Marigold Sweet Mace or Mexican Mint. So this one I think you can use as an herb or it's uh, at least it's very scented. So let's read it. Tender perennial, late blooming marigold, great in teas and other drinks for flavoring many dishes, Hispanic heirloom. So I love it that it's perennial and it can be used in teas and such. And um, the Linnaeus, Linnaeus, let's read that one. A smoldering and memorable marigold with gracefully wavy stems and smoky orange and red blooms that resemble embers in a crackling fire. This old variety has long been tended at the Linnaeus Botanical Gardens in Uppsala, Sweden. Oh, interesting. Next are a series of uh, plants that you can use in teas. So I definitely want to have herbal teas and uh, um, things that draw pollinators to the garden, but mostly also for a secondary use of using as a tea. So here's Korean Golden Jubilee. Look at how pretty the flowers are. And let's see. It's a hyssop. Agastache rugosa. Golden foliage and heavy scented. This easy adaptable perennial is attractive to pollinators. Makes a lovely anise flavored tea. Plants average two feet tall and will be covered in oodles of butterflies and bees. Goldfinches also love the seeds. <laughs> I love that. Next, I got this Akastashi Apache Sunset, Agastaki Orantiaca, perennial USDA zones 5 through 9, root beer scented flavors and foliage make this scarlet bloomed Agastaki a phenomenal tea plant. Mature, it is 18 to 24 inches high and 12 to, inch, 12 to 18 inches wide, pollinator friendly drought tolerant and adaptable to a range of soils so i love that all these are perennial love it so much and this is a bonus i read that ruby are scented i love that and here's another agastache texas hummingbird mint heather queen look at how pretty that is the leaves are purple on the underside and green on the top and with purple blooms a tidy, half-hearty perennial that is aromatic and attractive to pollinators. Great in arrangements and is used to make teas and mosquito repelling oil. So look at that. This one attracts bees. You can use it as a tea and it repels mosquitoes. I love it. This one is Agastache Rose Mint. And I think I also got it for 
So, an aromatic perennial with phenomenal minty rose fragrance, the lavender rose-colored blooms are ir irresistible to nectar lovers, thrives in poor soils. Next, I don't know why, but I've developed an obsession for Cosmos. I used to think they're pretty common because I started off with the purple sensation variety mix, and I just thought, oh, I mean, they're cute, they're pretty, but... Uh, not until I saw the array of colors that they offer. So Candy Floss Pink Sunrise. Look at how pretty that is. And it almost looks painted on. It's really gorgeous with the yellow center. These high contrast candy pink blooms are a must have for creating your pollinator oasis. Uniform 24 inch plants make a tidy presentation of large blooms the color of a stunning sunrise. Enliven your pots, beds, and borders with this bushy medium height Cosmo. Next I got this apricot lemonade. Um, I kind of went back and forth on it but I do definitely like how it's the center is yellow and it's got the bright pink. It's a little more subtle than the other ones. Um, I do like subtle colors, but I also like bright colors, so um, I decided to finally get it. A silky soft palette of unique color combinations has made Apricot Lemonade one of the most highly sought after heirloom flowers. This is the first Cosmos variety known to combine sumptuous shades of butter, buttery lemon and apricot. Whimsical display in the landscape or fine arrangements. I got this Veluete colored one because this one looks really really pretty too with the really painted on looking appearance of the petals. Annual two foot plants, profuse blossoms throughout the season, solids and stripes in a rather new cosmos color, cherry red. Definitely eye candy. Next, I found this to be really mesmerizing, Cosmic Red. Look at how bright it is. And then the Cosmic Yellow. And I, I couldn't get one without the other. I think they will stand uh, really nicely together. And the yellow one's even prettier because the blossoms seem to be like double. So, let's see. 50 to 60 days carefree buttercup yellow blooms will add a splash of sunshine to the landscape. These one to two foot tall plants are rugged and reliable, smothered in semi-double to double two inch wide blooms, a pollinator magnet. Love it so much. Next is the red one. These brilliant lipstick red blooms are exceptionally easy to grow. Double and semi-double blooms reach 2 inches across, sitting atop 12 to 24 inch tall plants. A vigorous and carefree long season bloomer that will attract tons of pollinator action. And I'm glad that they did decide to send me some food items <laughs> because I typically just order food items and because I have so many flowers in this seed haul, I am so glad that they packed some different things. So here is some Genefee's basil. I definitely love that basil so much. It smells so good and it tastes wonderful. Then I have this Japanese wasabi radish. And boy, does that look good, doesn't it? We'll see how it tastes. <clears throat> Let's see. This round-shaped Japanese icon radish has intensely pungent spicy flavor. Ooh, that, I don't know about spicy and pungent together. Perfect for lovers of wasabi. Chefs and experimental home cooks will be delighted to play with this sensational root crop. Maybe I can make something with it that will taste delicious. I'm not sure. Annual, so the Genovese basil, I didn't read the back. It's an annual famous Italian heirloom, most popular with cooks, makes excellent pesto, tolerates numerous harvests, large leaves, aromatic and tender. It definitely is aromatic, I love it. Next I got this datil pepper, chili pepper, and I heard it has vicious heat. I got this in a different haul. And <laughs> I also ordered it once, um, so I've got three packs of these. I'm up to my eyeballs in this datil or datil pepper, so <laughs> now I'm a little bit worried. With every haul I get one of these, I was hoping for 
something else, but I'm not going to complain because a free seed is is also very welcome. So, but even if not, I can just use it as a decorative plant, you know? And it's it's all even better that it's edible. Um, yeah, so I'm very thankful for all of them. And that is my seed haul. There is my seed haul. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you garden with me. Please like, subscribe, and share and have a wonderful day and a wonderful growing season. Guess what I got again and it's got a different pattern. It's always like a present every time I have one of these packages. So Baker Creek had a sale and that's the reason why I got these seeds. On Valentine's Day um, you could get $25 worth of seeds and you get three free seed packets on top of the normal seed packets that you would um, if you ordered like a bunch. So in this order I got four free seed packages and I love them. So I'll go through with that with you in a moment um, and meanwhile I would like to discuss this seed swap the 11th National Heirloom Exposition in Ventura County I would love to go I, I really think it's great for homesteaders and for gardeners alike however um, every year it's set in the September time frame and that's when my kids are in school and of course they can't have it you know, every year where every parent can make it. However, a lot of people's kids are in school by then. So I won't be able to make it, but I wish I could. I really think it would be awesome to check it out. Thank you for packaging my seeds so carefully. Um, so what I ordered was this beautiful colored Dakota black corn and I love how how beautiful it is. Um, I'm curious what color the um, outside would be when it as it grows. Um, so it's a tasty popcorn with dark reddish black ears that are attractive for decorations. It's an easy grower and succeeds almost everywhere and I believe it's a popcorn Next, I got this black strawberry tomato. I normally don't get little, little tiny tomatoes like that, but they look so gorgeous and I wanted to give it a try, especially with that name, black strawberry. I wonder what the flavor would be like. It says one ounce fruit is marbled blue, scarlet, and gold. A bowl full resembles a luminous bunch of gems, and the flavor is decadent and indulgent with perfect sweet and tart balanced flavor. Extremely productive, early, obvious choice for gardeners and market farmers. Love that description. Next, I ordered fenugreek. I'm going to try to do more herbal things. I've never tried this before. It kind of looks like pea shoots. Hmm, very interesting. Annual plant aromatic leaves are a popular pot herb in India. Seeds are used in curry. Makes a tasty tea. Ooh, I didn't even know that. Um, I, it wasn't in the description in the um, on the website that it can make a tea and that it's used in curry. Oh, I love that so much. Like I said, I want to do a lot of herbs, so I'm going to try this Greek mountain tea. And it's kind of fuzzy and grayish green blue. Really, really pretty. It's a perennial. Ooh, I love that. Love that it'll come back. Zones 7 through 11 attracts pollinators, and you can brew tea with it. And it's a low growing sub shrub that reaches 10 inches tall and a foot wide. Also known as ironwort, the leaves are long and sword shaped with a silvery color and slightly fuzzy texture. Beautiful. Next, I have this toothache plant, yellow. I chose this one. There was a white colored one, but this one looked more robust, like it was stronger or bigger. It's an annual, it's incredibly potent. Canary colored flowers retain their numbing qualities when dried 
or made into tinctures. So I plan on using it um, to make tinctures and teas or something like that in case someone has like a toothache or they're about to go see the dentist, you know, then you won't need to have that extra bill of numbing your, your mouth. Next, I have this Murasaki no Uta stock and the color came out so vibrant in the the catalog. I mean, it looks really gorgeous and bonus, it's edible or can be used in teas. As well, it has a nice fragrance and it's flowering. So all great reasons to buy that. And then of course I'm attracted to Echinacea Paradiso Super Duper. This was the most expensive seed packet. It was $5, but look at how pretty the flowers are with the yellow center. And it says a dazzling double petaled echinacea in the most charming rosy tones. This enchanting medicinal plant is a perennial that will bloom in its first year. 36 inch tall plants with some variation and it's great for uh, zones 3 through 10 so it's beautiful and perfect. And that it's perennial comes back every year and that it's um, medicinal. So for my free packets they gave me this cabbage cour de bu which looks really awesome. Like I said I never grew cabbages before but um, looking at these um, I have this one salad recipe. I don't really know what else to do with cabbage, so that's why I don't normally grow it. But I, I do want to try it. It says an old European heirloom, very popular, tender, three to four pound pointed ox heart type heads. Excellent for home, home or market. Love that. Amish paste tomato. Oh, I've been wanting to buy this and I never have and I'm so glad they gave this to me. I love this one. Um, from an Amish community in Wisconsin, giant blocky plum shaped tomatoes have delicious red flesh, perfect for paste and canning. And I, I plan to do that. I really love like maybe to make ketchup or something. And here's sunflower chocolate cherry. And it looks so pretty and I'm glad they gave me this one. I've been wanting to buy it but um, I've, I've just been buying uh, like the, the other varieties like red velvet and stuff like that. So this one is a cherry color bloom four to six inches across with velvety soft petals. Oh that sounds so nice. And great for pollinators and multi-branching. I love that too because what better than um, one flower on a stalk? Many flowers on one stalk. And then I have this spoon tomato and these are very very tiny tomatoes it looks like that fits that fit on a spoon like numerous. So let's see what it says. Micro mini fruit may be the world's tiniest tomatoes Fire engine red fruit is arranged beautifully along super long trusses. Bold classic red tang tangy tomato flavor. Spoon tomatoes pop when you bite into them. A delightful treat. Ooh, I like that they pop. Kind of like tomato caviar. 